If you're like only point of reference to what battle rap is, is 8 Mile, then you're probably gonna think it's a bunch of people in like oversized hoodies and jeans. <laughs> so it's the whole thing that draws me into it is the intellectuality of it. It is crazy, the level of attention that people put into their writing now. Battle rap is not rocket science, we running out of space for challenges. They think just cause I teach, I don't push a rock to clients. Like I would just wash my hands at a prophet like Pontius Pilate. <laughs> Battle rap now is, is so funny because people have to try harder because you know now that like a lot of people are going to see what you're going to do. Get left walking dead round Atlanta thinking biting makes you sick. Yeah. My name is Roman Fife, I'm 26 years old. I'm a rap battler and co-founder of Boneflop Entertainment Limited which is right now the biggest rap battle slash hip hop promotion in the UK. Yo, 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 welcome. This is Jump Off TV's first ever basement street battle. You done though, we've got six of the top MCs in the country we are gonna be featuring tonight. And boy, we've got a lively night still. First up to bat, we've got MC Err. My rap name is Err, I've been called Err since I was about 17 years old. I got started in battle rap because I used to hang around every Friday and Saturday night with a rapper called Archaic. My name's Archaic, I've been on Jump Off many a time. And this is my friend. Yo, this is uh, uh, He entered a tournament called the World Rap Championships in 2006 when I first kind of met him. By the time 2007 came around, I was confident enough just about in my freestyle ability to enter with Archaic. But to be honest, I probably wasn't fully ready because I was like young, I'd only just turned 18. We did a, a tryout battle right next to Tower Bridge in central London. By the time the actual tournament came around, I was just like, well, it's like, I have to be ready now. And we ended up doing quite well. You didn't know what was going to happen after 2007, the World Rap Championships. So you spent too much money in 07 and weren't really doing that much. So me and Kruger were just kind of like, let's just film some battles and do it ourselves because no one's filming battles. We know a lot of people that battle that have never been on camera. Let's just film it. There wasn't really anything going on in battle rap around 2008 because the WRC was in 2007. And after then, it was kind of like nothing for a long while. Me and Earl were just like, you know what I mean? Let's just set up our own battles. We can film it, I've got a camera. He just had a camera, and I just, I mean like a shitty, you know, little camera. We had all these people, and we just thought, that's, that's enough, like, let's just film a few battles and like, see what happens. Don't flop, don't flop, don't flop, don't flop. Yo, don't flop, it's Earl back here, don't flop. But this is don't flop, fuck another intro, make some noise! Yeah! Like for the first, I'd say, at least year, it was only, it was just like, we are filming these battles because we are filming them. And it kind of just transformed into another concept from there on. We just had like a few like popular battlers that came through and really like took it up to the next level. As we grew as a company, we started getting more and more people involved. The, the battles got better and the footage got better and everything just got better. I think some people, when you say about battle rap, they'll think, you know, it's a bunch of dudes in hoods looking intimidating, trying to be like angry and aggressive in a room. But like in reality, like I feel like it's the great equalizer. I feel like uh, if, in battle rap, you can get someone who's got like a fucking PhD or a master's degree who like works as a lawyer or a teacher. And he can go up against a kid that has never fucking got a qualification in his life who's being raised on a council estate in like a rough area. And in that matchup, they're completely equal. My name's Liam Bagnall. I'm the creative director of Don't Flop. But what I find like interesting about writing is how fucking intellectual it is. I mean, that's kind of why like freestyles kind of died out now as well. We still do freestyle battles and they pop off, but generally someone can't say something as intellectual or as thought out as they can do when they write. The transition from the freestyle to the written. I'd say that's definitely the main change. It used to be a 100% freestyle. If you spat one written line, people would hate you. Whereas now it's like if you come and you freestyle the whole battle, everyone thinks you're lazy and you haven't tried. I think it's good the way it is now. I think it makes you try harder. Every battle is filmed. Well, you know that when you come into a battle. I feel like it's something that everyone has always been into, but they don't know it. 
it, it's, it's, it's humorous. There's, a, there's an edge of like humor to it that people can just latch onto and like fully understand and grasp. I, I just think it's gonna keep growing. I mean, there's been so many points that we've been doing this battle rap shit where I thought, oh, it's peaked. And I think like now that we've come into America and everyone's seeing what we're doing, we've just got even more fans coming onto it and hopping on and we're starting to build like a global brand of very talented MCs from different backgrounds. We'd always take Don't Flop to other places, the same way to kind of in the UK, we hit up every city, everywhere we could go. Once we knew we had people out there that could help us with it, it was like, why not, do you know what I mean? It's a chance to go to America, expand our league. Because we always used American talent anyway, we were flying them over. But really, it makes just as much sense to fly ourselves over and do events here. The whole thing's in USA. Uh, it's different to the UK because I, I have to liaise with more people because obviously we don't have like the links out here that we have back home. It's not as easy. I do put a lot of faith in other people to help me promote it. I set up the DC event this time in the same way that I've set up the other USA events. A uh, dude called Maestro, he actually hit me up. I knew they were doing events in Atlanta with my man Sonny Bamboo. He was open to the idea, you know, we just kept speaking and speaking, and so we both agreed that, you know, being in the capital of the United States would just be epic. We spoke a lot, and he sent me, like, a few examples and names that I didn't actually know that he wanted to be involved. So once he sent me them, I thought, yeah, okay, cool, actually, this could work out quite well. It was a two-day event. To me, it was really important to have an event for the local guys to really get that shine and get that opportunity. But then the major event that everyone was talking about, everyone came out to Rock and Roll Hotel in DC, it was just... This is Don't Flop USA. We are here in Washington DC, DMV. Please make some noise for the battle. Let's go! I feel quite proud, like especially at the event, there was many moments I had these like big like epiphanies. Just looking around, I was thinking this is so crazy that, that, that we're in DC and like this crowd of Americans has come out to our event and they, 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 they are fans of like the battles that we set up from like 5,000 miles away. And it'll probably just keep growing to the point where we're coming out here with like, like a busload of people and going around, around, around. That's always been the idea that we can come out here for like a month or two months or three months and have our own like bus with the big decal on the side and the fucking, you know what I mean? And just like, yeah, that, that would be the dream. I don't want to go back to an office. I did that shit for like six, seven years to like be able to like afford a camera, like I've done that. So my motivation is to just keep building, keep creating stuff to try and make this community that we've built grow and for everyone to be able to get a shot of fame and for everyone to be able to get a shot to get known. I mean, if like a cameraman could do it, then these ridiculously like intelligent people that I work with who are infinitely more skilled in different ways than I am, then they can do it. And I, I want to make sure that that platform is there for everyone and that we're all working together for like a greater cause where we can create, just keep creating whatever the fuck we want. I feel like at the moment I can make anything that I want and it would be okay. Like that is liberating. It wasn't like, let's start a company that's going to be the biggest ever. It was just like, we might as well film these battles because we have a camera and we can all battle and it's like, cool. I didn't think it could get to this stage where I'd be like, do you know what I mean, coming to America, doing events out here. It's a blessing. We're just accidental entrepreneurs, you know what I mean? Like, uh, we never intended, none of us intended it to be this. <laughs> Life's got super weird in the past couple of years. 